You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means we are back. It is Thursday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. It is time. For episode due of your bi-weekly options extravaganza, known far and wide as the Option Block. My name is Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-scintillating network upon which so many of you folks are just binging your little hearts out out there. We love you all. Keep rocking and rolling and driving up my bandwidth bills. I like you all. <laughs> And of course, if you want even more content, that binging is not enough. We have not sated you yet. You need to go above and beyond. What would you say to perhaps, I don't know, two additional programs like, let's say, great pro Q&As as well as unusual activity paloozas like options oddities at the end of the week? What about, I don't know, maybe some awesome giveaways? Going to do one of those in a few minutes, so stay tuned for that. As well as, of course, live access to this and everything else we do here on the network. Great chats, communities, questions bumped up to the top of the list. All sorts of fun. And more to come. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to commence your journey to the dark side. I do want them to have not done it yet. I do want them to add the slash dark side there as well. Right now we got the cool slash secret club. We probably should add slash dark side while we're at it too because it just sounds fun a lot of fun being had over there at the pro check it out if you have not done so already let's check out who's joining us here today first let's go out to a quiet a sleepy and probably a sad hamlet given what's going on in the markets today it is the land of saint charles we are joined once again by the uncle list of mike's mr uncle mike tusa from saint charles wealth manager uncle mike how go things in the sad hamlet of saint charles today sir oh it's always happy in saint charles and so um, you know, in the, in the buy and hold strategies, we buy and hold in the short term strategies, we wait for better entry points sometimes. But what it boils down to is I like to wake up every day thinking, how can I drive up Mark's bandwidth bill? And that's where we're at. That is kind of his daily mission in life. And so far he is succeeding. <laughs> Let's go out now to the rockingest of lobsters. By the way, listeners, these two before show time were, we're singing a fun duet about Short volatility. We'll have to see if we can get them to reprise that here on the show. I'm, of course, joined by the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the show A and B. Do you feel like uh, reprising any of your musical talents for our listeners? Um, the problem is I'm so old, I can't even remember what my jingle was. So um, <laughs> It's gone. It's already gone. <laughs> it's already on my head. You, you got to grab it while it's there, and you have to just enjoy the richness of it while you know while it's going on so um i would love to say i i can't what was i what was i was i uh 
I don't even remember. So yes, it is. Actually, it is a dark and stormy day in Maine today. It'll it to do your heart uh, good. Yes, once again, we have called it into being the dark and stormy shores of Maine. It fits well with the dark and stormy market. So let's get to it. It is time for the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody. Welcome to the trading block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading What is lighting up our tapes out there today? And as I alluded to earlier, uh, Uncle Mike sad face today because it is all red on the screens yet again. Listeners, not too long ago, we were hanging out at that 4,300 level thinking, could we charge north? Seemed like it might be a little bit of a resistance to the downside. We have, of course, broken well past that now, listeners, off another 1% today. S&P well below the 4,000 level, threatening 3,900. Let's see, did we... We bounced off at 3904 this morning, listeners, before rallying a little bit. So we couldn't break, quite break 3900 today, but we are threatening an S- S&P off exactly 1% as we were kicking off the show here today. NASDAQ saying, hold my bear kid off nearly 2%, 1.99%. We want a little bit more with NASDAQ. We've got uh, Scott Nations joining us for the first time ever on Twifo coming up in a little over an hour. Of course, the creator of VolQ. The NASDAQ volatility product. He also talks a lot about all their futures, options, products out there. Should be a fun show. So stay tuned for that, all you live folks. You'll have that in your ear holes or after option block. All you folks listen to the old OB, just be patient. Hit next after you're done with this. And hopefully Twifo will be there waiting for you on the on-demand side. And, of course, the Dow off. Not quite half a percent, about four-tenths of a percent or so out there. So the Dow playing the laggard on this red day on the screen. And, of course... Markets are red. That means vol is green. VIX, a little bit north of 27 when we kicked off the show, about a 27.10. That puts it up a little over one point, about 1.3 points from where it was this time last week. So, yeah, we are a far cry from the sub-20 handle. We hung out in for the better part of a week. Just a couple of weeks ago, listeners, my how times have changed. VIX, so the vol of vol hanging out at a 90 still. That puts it pretty much exactly unched from where it was on Monday's show. So no change from a vol, a vol perspective. VXX, you know, who knows what the hell this product is. They probably should take it out of the rundown now at this point. <laughs> 19 and three quarters right now, up about a quarter. We were talking about this on our pro Q&As. We had some questions about the vol products. And our old friend, The Last Emperor, who has been on this sh- option block show many times back in the past, was also slamming VXX and saying about what a shame it is what they've done to that product. And that is indeed true. Uh, UVXY 10 80 up about half a point so everybody was out there saying when are we going to get the reverse split not today listen there's market doing that for you bringing us back up north of a 10 handle over north of a 10 handle you're not getting a reverse split that's that's pretty much for certain s vix so our inverse friend taking a bit of a breather today at about a 12 even when we kicked off the show down not quite half a point about four tenths of a point uh uvix so our levered friend 11 and a quarter up about three quarters of a point and VolQ, just talking about it. This creator is going to be on in about a little over an hour here on Twifo. 32 even when we kicked off the show. Up not quite two points, about one and three quarters points. All right. The table has been set. Let's go around the horn. Since he's our resident bull, maybe we'll save him for last because maybe he'll cheer us up. We'll go instead to the dark and stormy shores of Maine because he's always dark and stormy himself. And that's kind of fitting for the markets we have today. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, what is lighting up your tape on a dark and stormy day in the markets? Well, there's a lot of red on the screen. Oh, yeah. I haven't noticed. Where are you looking? Uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think we're, what are we, flirting with 3,900 now? I have to, oh, 3,918. I mean, we. I think we've been through it once or twice today. Um. I, I mostly feel like this is a market that, like, okay, everybody was front running. We were pretty huge front running in the month of August on some inflation pivot, you know, I believe. I don't know how folks actually thought that they weren't going to keep raising rates um, because, in my view, the Fed has created a bit of a disaster. So has the federal government. Uh, I think both administrations, actually, let's just go all the way back to George W. Bush, uh, destroying the very, um, let's just say, 
uh, balanced budget that we used to have. Yeah, Cheney came out and said, but, you know, deficits don't matter. Reagan proved it, right? So he just kind of kiboshed <laughs> all of that. And if you can't count on a Republican to balance a budget, what do you got, sir? I know, but it's like, it's all, you got no, you know, at, at some point, certainly you could have economic growth, but you, you have to stop spending. And that's spending uh, as a percentage started to decline um, under uh, Clinton, right? Because we had Robert Rubin, probably best treasury secretary ever. And then- uh, Until he stepped down and hosed the SPX pit when I was standing in. Let me just throw that out there. Yeah. A <laughs> little bit of information <laughs> leakage, just maybe, just maybe. Why is everybody buying puts at five minutes and, after and, the know, open on the morning? you were right, right? Because, you know, <laughs> so, I guess Summers wasn't bad. But anyways, you have, you have basically all, all the presidents at this point the, for the last 20 years are like, ah, it's cool. You know, we're going to spend so- um, you know, and the Fed governors are complaining anyway, so that's my gripe, right? So all these nobody is minding the store anymore. And now we have inflation, and I think to some degree we're gonna have to pay the piper on it. Um, I mean, since it's mostly self-created, it's just dumb policy, and you know, politicians are greedy little people. Um, you know, will it can can the Fed raise rates enough to kind of kill inflation? Yes. I think the second part of the problem is just, you know, what I can only call now is a global chaotic energy policy. Um, because winter comes and everybody needs to heat their house. All right. The green energy thing is not ready. Anywhere close to support <laughs> that type of infrastructure. So to, to deny fossil fuels to germany or you know half of eastern europe or half of europe is all it's all madness right so now we're stuck with this you know uh, geopolitics of the russian you know all of these sanctions that have frankly done nothing done nothing um so we're the fed has to fight inflation however the root cause of the problem is probably uh let's just call it a lack of policy gumption um when it comes to this Russia Ukraine thing, we're just, we're not, there's no, all we're doing is causing problems for ourselves, basically. So I think it's going to be hard for the Fed to, to help solve this problem since a lot of it is an energy squeeze. Um, so, how long will it go on? I don't know. And I think that's a market finally like, is trying to figure out to some degree, like things aren't so bad, right? Well, as far as in the US, um, they weren't. But it could it could be made worse, right? You keep jacking up rates to kill inflation, but you have uh, you know public policy that is not dealing with the fact that it's high energy prices that are kind of the culprit, and they're high because of all this geopolitical stuff, and nobody's really kind of using their head at this point. Um, so anyway, I think that's where. So and I think the market will be essentially rudderless for a while. So we're going to get a, an inflation rough CPI report on the 15th. Um, and then the Fed, I'm sure, will be, okay, 75 basis point raise, and we'll just keep doing it. And the market has to decide, you know, what uh, what what pony to ride on. So as of right now, they can't ride on the pivot pony anymore. <laughs> so they have to figure out what they want to ride on. And um and that's where we find ourselves. So I think it'll be, it's a stock picking market, but you know, when markets look like this in my head, I'm like, I'm like, okay, every week I'm going to look for something to buy. Um, I'm not trying to pick the bottom, but it's just going to be ugly, but it is an opportunity, I think, because I think the world was getting ready for this post COVID, you know, get, just get back to normal. And um, this inflation and the Ukraine thing really threw a monkey wrench and everything. Um, and the supply chain issues as well, right? With all the dollars that came flooding out of all from all these governments. So you have multiple th problems that again are are yet to be solved or anywhere close to being solved. And I think uh, you know the market kind of woke up from its. Uh, I, I don't know. I think it was a little on a party for the month of August, like "Ooh, everything's going to be cool again," and now realizing maybe. Maybe it won't be cool again for a little while. So that's that's why I'm a little bit of a rant, but that's that's what we got. While you were talking, I was just I was just looking up 
the infamous policy change, the exact date that was when, when Powell came out and said, yeah, we don't really care about inflation anymore. We're going to let it run a little bit. That was back in August of 2020. It seems like a lifetime ago now. These comments don't seem to have aged very well in the, in the intervening two years. <laughs> they were talking about he was worried about inflation being too low and previous regimes had been a little bit too aggressive on the inflation front. And, you know, long term, low inflation could actually be damaging. So they're going to let it run a little bit. And when they asked later, like, you know, what what range you'd be content with, they were thinking about two and a quarter to two and a half percent. That's what they would be content with. And lo and behold, uh, all of that, all of that has, has fallen by the wayside. I guess you, I'm guessing if he could go back, he probably would take back a lot of those a lot of those comments that day. But that's a comment for another day. We could bash the Fed all day if we like. But and a lot of people are out there doing that. We don't need to be be jumping into that boat. It's certainly been a challenging period to be a Fed chairman. I will give them that. But uh, outside of that, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, let's let's lighten things up here a little bit. Let's have a little fun. What's lighting up your tape in an otherwise not exactly fun market for Uncle Mike. And then when you're done, Uncle Mike, I will have a fun surprise for you and for the audience. Ooh, I'm excited. Well, I'll start off since Andrew is bailing on the duet. I, I got one, I got a jingle for you, Andrew. Andrew's trading options. Wow, wow, wow. Making lots of money now, now, now. How's that? <laughs> wow. Wow. Just off the cuff. Look at that. The jingle machine. That is Uncle Mike. He is now available on Upwork.com. You can hire him for your jingle purposes out there. You need a jingle in five minutes? Uncle Mike, and he'll even sing it for you. Wow. That's, wow, that that's a skill, sir. That's a skill. So what I've always wanted to do is, I don't know, you guys remember that show, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yeah, I used to love that show. I was, I've, I've always wanted to be on that show when they like freestyle like the songs like that. That's like, that. that's... That's my dream. I, I hope to do that someday. <laughs> really? But, Freestyle singing. I'll see you're, you're showing new sides to yourself every show, Uncle Mike. Hey, I used to do it all the time when my kids were babies and putting them to bed. We used to do the ID dieties and the hoedowns with them. And by gosh, my two year old, my uh, one year old, when my kids were a year old, they used to love it. Now they don't even want to admit that they even know me if I ever start getting into that. But I don't blame them for that, quite honestly. <laughs> Um, in terms of the markets today, uh, the indicator that I have is that uh, since we started this show, uh, the market is averaging approximately just under one point per minute. So if we can get a constant broadcast by the end of the day tomorrow, we'll be ahead on the year. So that's my proposal of how we manage risk right now. <laughs> um, so, uh, but on a serious note, uh, I agree with everything Andrew is saying. I think the key question is right now is are all of the dark and stormy, awful things with which he is saying, are those factored into this roughly 20% pullback in the market since the peak in January? And that is the key question right now. Uh, the bull case at this stage would be 3,900 from a technical standpoint uh, and looking at a chart. Uh, we had resistance at 3,900 in late June in early July, and it acted as a support level, approximate levels, uh, in early May, as well as once again in late May. So around these levels, we have kind of sort of uh, some pivot points uh, in recent history. So the bull case would be, okay, well, we've had that, and uh, we've pulled back. We've, we're actually down. Uh, the peak of the recent rally was on August 16th, and the high that day was 43.25. And so that means over the course of uh, two weeks and one day, uh, we've come down a pretty significant amount. So at some stage, markets typically tend to bottom. And by typically tend, I mean uh, 100% of the time in the history of the entire U.S. stock market, they have bottomed at some stage. So the key question right now is, when is it going to bottom? Uh, 3,900 is definitely a unique number. I know I said that on Monday about 4,000. 4,000, we had the 50-day moving average, plus we had the big round number, but 3,900, there's also a case for that. Now, of course, the bad news this time around is that from what I'm seeing, the next level of support with which we have doesn't come for the till the low 3,700. So if we break 3,900, I think that could be cause for concern for more markets or for more things dipping even further. Now, in terms of other things, uh, in the news today, it looks like we uh, China is uh, 
uh, quarantining a lot of people today. So that can't be a good thing by any means for the markets. Also, uh, there is some trade issues in that uh, it doesn't seem like our countries are really getting along too well with uh, chips. Uh, and so the chip sector is not pleasant today. Just looking at NVIDIA as one example, that's down over 11% on the day. So that's definitely some bad news that's holding down the markets as well. Now, the other thing that's still interest that, that's in, that interests me about this market is the fact that this is another one of those days to where stocks are down as well as bonds. And 10-year note, uh, yield is going a lot higher right now. And uh, that means the value of the note itself is going a lot lower right now. A lot of times when stocks and bonds go down at the same time, money appears somewhere in the near future. Now, is it going to appear in bonds? I don't know. People are so scared of rate hikes, it might not go there. Is it going to appear in stocks? Well, maybe all these evil things are going to happen that Andrew talks about, and the, it's not factored in as of yet. So maybe it's there. But I personally have a hard time believing that all the money is going to stay in VIX calls for that much longer. Uh, I could be wrong. We will see. Uh, but that's uh, kind of where it's at. And I know this is shocking, but even Bitcoin is down on the day. Uh, so we have that. Um, also, commodities are down. We have silver uh, down a pretty decent amount, over 1% on the day. Oil is down uh, almost 3% on the day. Uh, and then uh, natural gas somehow is not down with all of this. So interesting day to, see the le to say the least. I do feel that we are in kind of a, for lack of a better term, a pre-shuffle or pre-allocation shuffle market, meaning when we see what uh, non-farm is uh, in the future, we're going to, you're, you'll see the money appear somewhere. I just don't know where it's going to appear. And that's what I'm seeing. All right, Uncle Mike, you put on your singing pants for us before. Now I need you to switch very quickly to your picking pants. Are you ready? You got your picking pants on? I got my picking pants on. I'm ready to do some picking. <laughs> All right. Here we go then. All right. I have fired up our random number generator. Listeners, it is September 1st. Hard to believe. The month of August, which includes the options day of days, the greatest holiday in the options calendar, is now concluded, alas. And now we have commenced September. We are back into the fall here. But that also means all you folks in our pro are celebrating right now because one of you, a lucky one of you, is about to win the August Pro Trading Crate. All right, I got the numbers flashing before me. Uncle Mike, you know this dance. You won our wrestler pick from earlier this week, so you win the chance to pick the winner for this month. So when you are ready, sir, when the mood strikes you, you will say stop, and I will pause it, and we will see who the machine has chosen. Are you ready, sir? Or really, who, ready. who you have chosen. So, yeah, go for it, sir. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Now you know. Oh, no, 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 no. bam, bam, bam. Okay, I got it. I got it. All right, we are paused here. There we go. All right, let's see. Who does that coincide to? Uh Oh, Mr. OG, Mr. Option God. I see you floating around the live chat. Congratulations, sir. You can thank Uncle Mike. His picking pants worked out for you. You are now the winner of the August Pro Trading Crate. You are a lucky fellow. Our producer's We'll reach out to you. They will inquire about your clothing sizes as well as some other choices you have to make for what you'd like included in your box. And then the rest is going to be up to us. It's bespoke. You can, I can't even see it right now. There's a big pillar blocking it between me and the studio here. Listen, I can see just the, just the side of the giant mountain of items <laughs> that we give to you guys. I can just see part of it right now. There's more of it down there in the vault. We keep bringing it up to send out to you folks. So our producers will follow up. Congratulations. Congratulations to everyone. It's easy to win. All you have to do is be active in the pro during the month of August. So get in there if you haven't for the month of September. You join in now. You're active anytime throughout the month. You are eligible to win our next pro trading crate. You literally can't get this stuff anywhere else. They are completely bespoke, completely one off. We're kind of crazy for sending you guys this stuff. I guess we like you. It's a lot of work, a lot of effort, no small expense on our part. But we like you folks, so we keep doing it. And you know what else we like? Let's break down some numbers here for the market today because it's one of those usually days that are heavy red. They tend to generate a little bit of VIX paper, and we're seeing that right now. VIX north of half a million, ever so slightly right now, 504,000 contracts on the tape. The ADV 406, so we are well north of that today. 
going to be that way, close to that way, at least across the board. Uh, four and a half million right now for spy so that's well north of half of its adb uh, the adb is about 6.35 million out there uh, the s one and a half million contracts already so the s is not playing around today the, a- the adb about two and a quarter out there uh small caps iwm over a million already 1.02 million so small caps saying hold my bear kids we can do some numbers too the adb out there 803 that's already inflated and it's blowing past that and the Qs, of course, you know, the Qs can do some numbers. Not quite at their ADV, but getting pretty darn close. 1.8 million uh, out there. The ADV, 2.4. So, so far, small caps and VIX, the first two to blow past their ADV today. Let's see what's blowing away out there from an overall volume perspective. And it's a fairly active day. It's not, you know, the most active day we've ever seen, at least on the bottom half. Top half gets a little bit top heavy. We'll get there in a second. Cost you 222,000 contracts to break into the top 10. So that's not nothing. That gets you to the old Google, a.k.a. Alphabet. Uh, it's actually just ticked up right now on the day after being uh, down for a lot of the day. It's at 108, almost 108 and a half right now. Up slightly. It got up to 110 and a half earlier today in the low of 107.30. So had quite a big range today, hence the numbers we're seeing out there. Then we go to number nine. The Rock Lobster's favorite. This is good old Softy. 232,000 contracts for number nine. 257.40 is where Microsoft's hanging out right now. Off about four bucks or about one and a half percent on the day. Then we go to number eight. We're going Mimi again, listeners. Going to Bed Bath & Beyond. I think it's going beyond today to the dark side. 895 is where it's trading right now. Off about 60 cents or a little over 6% on the day. Let's see. The high for the day was 940. And right now doing 274,000 contracts on the tape for this one. Let me go to number seven. This one's been a frequent offender on the top 10. This is 3M, 355,000 contracts. Although, Mr. Rock Lobster, I think you may have some insight into why 3M is putting up so many, so much number, so many numbers today, so much contracts today. What, what's, your, what's your eye of the Cyclops telling you about 3M today? Yeah, Mark and I were trying to figure it out, actually. So... The 200 strike reversal in September has gone up 200,000 times <laughs> over the last couple of days. Um, so, I mean, 3M is, I, they have some kind of a lawsuit, like maybe against their earplugs, I think. That's what I heard, which was kind of odd to me. Um, but, um, but it's all reversal conversion action, and it's well in front of the dividend. So... I cannot figure out why somebody is continuing to pile up this trade. It is real. It's a head scratcher. Um, I have to be quite honest with you. It's a huge, it's a huge head scratcher uh, right now why they're doing it. But like, why would you put up 200,000 reversal, 200,000 at the 200 strike reversal conversions in there? It's like, it's, it's a little bit mind boggling to be quite honest. Take that paper away listeners and 3M's nowhere near our top 10, but right now it is at number seven. Number six, the artist formerly known as Facebook, now Meta, 402,000 contracts for number six. We're starting to get up there now, 162.15, off about three quarters of a buck right now for Meta. Number four, the Amazonian, 655 out there. So we're jumping up quite a bit from, actually, I skipped one. Number five, AMD. These, you know, the chip names are usually hanging out together. The fact that one of our other chip friends is not right here should give you some indication of what's going on at the top half of our most actives today. We've got AMD number five, 543,000 contracts. That one's off a little bit on the day. If I can get that one pulled up here. We've got Amazon first. There we go. AMD, that would be easy. There we go. About 80 bucks right now, off nearly five bucks. All the chip sector just uh, feeling the weight today of the issues with China that Uncle Mike alluded to earlier. Number four, we've got the Amazonians, 125 and a quarter, off about a buck and a half today. Good for 600 And 55,000 contracts, though, for number four. Then we jump up again to number three. We're over a million now, listeners. The fruit company, Apple, 1.08 million. 155.80 is where Apple is trading right now, off nearly one and a half bucks, or not quite 1%. Let's see, on the day, got as high as 157.68, and the low was 154.67. So a nice, pretty much exact $3 range on the day. We are closer to the bottom half than the top half of that right now, but intriguing stuff out there. You know, it wasn't that long ago. Apple was, looks like it was threatening that all time high of 182.94. Not quite there again right now, 155 and about three quarters or so right now. So it's ticking around a little bit 
Then we go to number two. We can probably guess what's somewhere in the top two here. And actually, it is at number two. It is NVIDIA. All this chip madness, NVIDIA kind of feeling the brunt of that off. Nearly 16 handles or 10.5% right now, trading 135.10. I started off the day 143.80, got as low as 132.70. So an $11 range for NVIDIA out there. As we rebounded a little bit off the lows, of course. All that coming on the weight of the U.S. government restricting chip sales to China. So that's obviously going to hurt NVIDIA. This name, not too long ago, was trading 190. August 15th, it was printing 190. My goodness, just a few weeks later, we are now at 135. So they have come for NVIDIA. And of course, over the past year, it has net down about 40% on the year. And of course, forget about from the highs. The highs were 346. It is nowhere near that now. So... Yeah, rough times here for NVIDIA. Named that for a long time there. It seemed like it could not go down. A day that ended in Y, NVIDIA was up. Today, not the case. I mean, number one, managing to outpace everything yet again is Tesla. 1.34 million. Tesla rocking and rolling today. Let's see, 269. Just just ticked below 270. 269.95 right now. Off about five and two-thirds, a little over 2%. On the day, got as high as 275.84 and as low as 266.15. So it's done a little bit of living today out there as well and good enough for 1.34 million contracts on the tape. That's Those are impressive numbers. And in terms of earnings this week, we had some names popping off. Let's see. We've got some move results going hot right now from our friends over there at Orax. Let's go to five below. They were yesterday after the bell. 127.88 is where they were trading going into their announcement. They were pricing in 8.1%. They delivered 6.2%. So perhaps not as much ball as you thought in the premium dollar store sector, a.k.a. Five Below. Uh, this is a name I was not aware of until Brian did it on his OPR a few months ago. Uh, this is Ollie's, Ollie's Bargain Outlet Holdings. This is a, uh, well, actually it was founded in Pennsylvania. I just never encountered an Ollie's in the wild, apparently. Uh, ticker symbol Ollie, O-L-L-I. Uh, they were popping off before the bell today. They were printing 5531 going into their announcement. They're pricing in, get this listeners, 8.6%. They delivered 1.4%. My goodness, they were pricing in a lot of juice in Ollie's bargain outlets. And apparently it was overblown. Wow. Intriguing stuff. After the bell today, we have Lululemon. They were trading pretty much exactly 300 bucks when we ran these numbers this morning. They were pricing in $19.60 in that straddle. In the past, they've moved about 16 and a quarter. So a little bit of extra juice in the home of the invisible yoga pants. Uh, coming up next week, really quickly, we've got uh, GameStop. You may have heard of them. Seventh after the bell. They were at twenty eight sixty four when we ran these numbers. They were pricing in $3.49. In the past, they've moved three sixty one. So a little bit less juice in the land of GameStop. Of course, I mentioned where we are on the season right now, 126%. So far and away, the most robust cycle we have witnessed since the onset of the pandemic so impressive stuff out there got new trades going up in the earnings trades report today as well ollies everybody's loving ollies they're picking up a straddle in ollies today as well as a straddle in patterson companies pdco and they're also buying buying calendars in lululemon and there we go and smart sheet Ticker symbol S-M-A-R. So new trades piling into the earnings trades report. Check it out for yourselves completely for free. Theoptionsinsider.com. Click on the options, news, and articles tab to check out all that for yourselves. As we keep on rolling, time to see what our Eye of Sauron has found for us today. It is time for the Odd Block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. Everybody, welcome to the Odd Block, the portion of the show where we get weird, we get wild, we get whimsical. Our chat's always fun and wild and having a good time celebrating right now. Option God's excited. He's in there. He says, thanks. I'm so excited. Yay for me for winning. Well, congratulations, Options God. Uh, you certainly uh, deserve it. Frank loving it. Congrats, Option God. We bow down to the God. <laughs> 
I like that. A lot of nice congratulations. You know, some people could be bitter they didn't win, but they're nice. They're a nice bunch in there, listeners. They congratulate each other when they win. We like to see that. Theoptioninsider.com slash pro is the place to go to join the ongoing parte that is uh, the pro fun. Let's get on out here. And Mr. Rock Lobster, in a day when everything's red on the screen, would you be surprised if I told you that our Eye of Sauron came back? Not with a lot of put buys, but a lot of people selling puts today. So does that surprise you? Um, it, it, would, it would not surprise me. Uh, mostly just, you know, on the, from the, uh, even from Tucson's conversation, like how, you know, ultimately you, you gotta, you gotta dip your foot in the pond a little bit when stocks are cheaper, right? That's how you end up making money in the stock market. You gotta buy them when nobody wants them. So it would not surprise me totally. Um, that uh people are uh are are selling puts today i have to say so well let's find out yeah yeah you gotta scroll pretty far to find anything from our ibis around that was not a sizable put sale <laughs> so let's start off with this one name we haven't talked about in a long time kind of an infamous name uh, this is aig many blame them for being the catalyst that kicked off the great meltdown back in 07 08 out there they're selling puts to the world effectively <laughs> Un- completely uncollateralized puts go figure that could be a bad thing but aig ticker symbol aig of course and the trading right now 51 dollars and 82 cents on the year they've kind of done a whole heck of a lot of nothing net off about five percent or nearly three bucks but that kind of belies how much they've actually moved a year ago they were 55 and a quarter then they rallied up in november to 6108 then they sold off hard again in November, end of November, beginning of December. December 1st, actually, they were back to 51 and three quarters. Then they shot up again in January, 61.87, and then back down to 56 and a half by late January. Then back up again in February, 63 bucks, and then back down by March 7th to 54 bucks. Then back up again to their high for the year on April 20th of 65 and three quarters. And they couldn't maintain that, listeners. They gave up some of that June 7th. They were 59 and a half bucks. And they fell off a cliff down to 49 bucks on June 16th. And they hit their low for the year on July 14th of $48.40. Before trying to make it back, they had a valiant effort. They shot up on August 4th and 51 bucks all the way to about 57 and a half bucks on August 12th. Hung out there for a while. And ever since then, they've been giving up that ghost back to where they are right now again, $51.80. So net, not much net movement on the year, but a whole lot of living being done in between there listen it seems like someone mr rock lobster has decided this far and no farther they are emulating what aig did but hopefully they have the collateral to back this up because they're blasting away at some puts selling ten thousand, a nice round ten thousand lots of the aig sep 50 puts five o's so almost two bucks out of the money uh, they got 92 cents for these which is a 33 vol and again, given how much the stock has moved around of late and the fact that it got down to 48 bucks not too long ago, that's probably merited. That's a decent amount of juice for AIG. And the stock was actually a little bit lower. It's 51 and a quarter when they sold these. So these are already looking a little bit better right now as the stock has rallied about 60 cents. Uh, there are no earnings in this cycle. The next earnings is on November 3rd. So Mr. Rock Lops, it looks like a very straight up old school, sizable line in the sand put this time on the 50 strike. For ninety two cents, ten thousand times. What say you, sir? Um, I, it does, and I on the savvy scale, I think it's pretty good. I think they, I even think they might have got the low of the day. Yeah, I don't hate this for, one. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, this is, and again, for the listeners, if you want to sell puts, it's much easier to sell puts in stocks you want to own. It's much easier to sell put spreads in stocks you want to own because that way you control your entry price. That's all I'm going to say about. The line in the sand put and for the average person and the line in the sand put for the institution um, that is going to end up buying a million shares of AIG anyway, because they need dividends to pay pension fund, pay pensions, or they'll take the 92 cents for a week and they'll take pay the pensions or they'll get the divvy, you know, eventually for that. So, you know, have your goal. Have your goal of your trade in mind. And if you're a pension fund that needs to raise money uh, on a monthly basis to pay stuff out, you need some kind of an income thing, right? You need to raise cash. So just, you know, FYI, um, just uh, segregate kind of the ideas that you have and what your goal is with them. But 
as as this one goes, I think it's probably a pretty good one for anybody who wanted to buy the stock for sure. Yeah, I don't hate this one. Not a long time frame, a decent amount of juice, decent level. I don't hate it at all. I don't hate it at all. Now the stock has moved, so alas, you cannot repeat it, listeners, but uh, intriguing stuff nonetheless. All right, speaking of repeating, twice in one show, <laughs> this is a record because we've never really talked about it before. This is Ollie's. Ollie's is back. Ollie's Bargain Outlet Holdings, Inc., Ticker symbol Ollie, O L L I, somewhere right now, Mr. Overby's ears are burning with excitement. Uh, Ollie's, by the way, Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster, guess what the name of the founder of Ollie's Bargain Outlet was? Uh, I'm going to take a wild guess and um, say Ollie. No, Morton Bernstein and Mark Butler. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, one of the guys who backed him, though, his name was Ollie. I guess he insisted for his money, you must name the chain after me. <laughs> I, I, mean, I think that's a, not a bad deal, though. Yeah, I guess. It's just funny. Uh, Morton and Mark, and they named it Ollie's. I love it. And they named it Ollie's. Well, there you go. You know, surprise the things you learn on the option block, listeners. It's crazy. Uh, Ollie's trading right now a little bit shy, 54 bucks, 53.92. They've had a rough year, off nearly 26% on the year. A year ago, they were trading 72 and a half bucks. And then they kind of gave it up in in March. They actually hit their low for the year in March, 37.67. So not quite a month after the whole invasion and all the madness was popping off there. Then they rallied hard again. They tried to make it back. They were actually up on the year again. They got up to 71.17 on July 8th. So they were they had, that's a huge move from 37.67 to 71.17 by July 11th. So man. Wow, they really they really clawed their way back. And then they kind of couldn't maintain it. And then most recently, August 25th, they were trading about 66 bucks. And then they've fallen off a cliff since then, back down to where they're at now, 53.94. So, man, volatile bargain outlet out here. <laughs> Let's see what we found out here. Oh, surprise, surprise. More line in the sand puts, Mr. Rock Lobster. This time, someone going out to the set 45 puts. So I said we're just a little bit shy of 54 right now, Mr. Listeners. They sold 3,595 of these SEP 45 puts for 26 cents. That is about a 62 vol, which, again, looking at this chart, that is merited. This bargain outlet moves. I should notice, I should note, by the way, that uh, this is post earnings. I mentioned them earlier. Obviously, they had said their earnings report. We just talked about it. So these are someone coming in immediately after the earnings announcement and trying to harvest what vol is left before it goes the way of the dodo. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, almost 4,000 of the set 45 puts for 26 cents. What do you think about these? And our new favorite name, Ollie's Bargain Outlet Holdings, Inc., founded, of course, by Morton and Mark. Yeah, I mean, um, hmm, I, I, I think they can a decent put. I think this is a, feels like a little more aggressive one uh, only because I guess the earnings have come out, you know, uh, I, okay, you know, I don't know. I take that back. Maybe not so aggressive, but. Um, I, I don't think it's a bad I don't think it's a bad sale, but same same rationale. Um, you definitely want to buy the stock uh, at that level, but you're right. Yeah, I think you're they're trying to squeeze the last bit of juice out of this one, and and it, it appears that they're gonna you know that they're gonna be right. So, but the market's still about right there. Um, but with earnings out and ten dollars out of the money, you're like, it, it, not a bad play, not a bad play at all. All right, we'll get out of here on one more here. Let's go out to our August 8th show and see if our trader made some money or not. August 8th, we reviewed some folks loading up on some calls in New Holdings Limited. This is a Brazilian fintech out of Sao Paulo. They're effectively a digital banking name. A ticker symbol new, N-U. And let's see. At the time, we profiled 10,247 of the AUG5 calls. Paper gobbling them up. Lifting the offer for 30 cents. This was a 107 vol. The stock was $4.81 at the time. And let's see, they had earnings on the 15th. So this was very much an earnings play as well. So they were swinging for the fences. Like a total of 24,000 went up that day. So this is a pretty sizable, sizable trade. Uh, and then it uh, looks like they came in. On the 15th, so this was the 8th, and like a week later, on the 15th, they traded 33,000 more of these things. So this was a very active name, very active strike. They picked those up for a quarter. So they were buying more for a quarter, it seems like. 
And the stock went out. These remember, these were the five calls for 30 cents and later for 25 cents, listeners, over 50,000 times. And the stock closed, unfortunately, at $4.65. And there were still a whopping 47,000 of these five calls open at that time, listeners. So unfortunately, looks like a big ouchie on this one, Mr. Rock Lobster. On that initial print, just the initial print we talked about, the 30 cent kind, they dropped about 300 grand on that first block. And if you add up all the other volume, including the 25 cent kind they bought later, over a million, about one and a quarter million dollars. Mr. Rock Lobster, they were swinging for the fences in New Holdings Limited. And unfortunately, those fences kept moving, sir. And uh, alas, they, they dropped the ball, sir. What say you? <laughs> um it, again interesting oh this is a this is a uh a trade that you're paying off here right so yeah it does it does appear that uh now i i just looks like maybe this one just went this went to the sad pile i feel you know they didn't they it looks like they maybe did they scalp out of them i'm just looking at the open interest right now uh but those are gone so it just it looks like they're kind of you know, it, it, I think just sad, there's just sadness overall. This is and it, it's another Brazilian company though, like uh, PBR, and uh, but this is uh, digital digital banking, digital banking, digital Very banking indeed. And you know, a lot of your questions are digital. At least they're sent in via digital platforms. So let's get to some of those right now. It is time for the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. All right, everybody. Let's get to some of the questions we've actually asked you guys here first, see if we can pay some of those off. We have a twofer going right now, which is kind of interesting. Uh, first off, we've asked you guys... Uh, the markets obviously rocked by Powell last week. They were still down when we posted this at the start of the week. They're obviously still down now as well. Uh, so we're asking you guys, does this second leg of the inflation sell-off have legs? Or will the bulls return with a vengeance? Quite simply, where will the SPX close at the end of Q3? Gave you four choices. North of 4,300, the 4,000 to 4,299 range, 3,700 to 3,799, or south of 3,700. Mr. Uncle Mike, we shall go to you first, sir. Have your views changed since uh, the Monday show? What are your thoughts and what do you think our audience is voting for? Sir? I think the audience is slightly bearish. So, uh, I mean, what would you say? Between 3,700 and what was the other number? I apologize. 3,700 and 39.99 on that one or below 3,700 if you go in dark. Side. I think they're 3,700 to 39.99 and uh, I am slightly bullish still. I believe it was what? 4,100 to 4,300? Close to it, 4,000 to 4,300, yeah. I'm going with that one. So that's where we're at with everything, and uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. By the way, I didn't tell you we had that flash poll on uh, on a Monday show, I believe it was. We were debating what was better finisher for the 80s wrestlers, Hogan's leg drop or Ultimate Warrior's Gorilla Press Slam. Well, the Warrior Slam won with 62.5% of the vote, sir. Does that surprise you? No, I mean we have intel we have an intelligent audience. I mean that's that's definitely a better finishing move. I mean obviously Hulk Hogan was a much bigger name, but um, I mean I'm I'm willing to bet that my father, who is uh, in his late seventies, he could perform the Hulk Hogan leg drop in a similar fashion that Hulk Hogan performed it. <laughs> Whereas at my peak of strength i don't know i i may have been able to have done the warrior press at on certain people with my like, party with... trick in college is i would, <laughs> I would do overhead presses with people and i worked up to a 240 pounder so that's a, about as high as i got with that there you go you definitely could have got a cheerleader so i don't know if i could have done it with the bigger people could have got a cheerleader up there at least so that would that would have worked <laughs> that's how it started <laughs> at parties in college so uh all right and then uh mr rockloff the same question for you what do you think our what is your vote first off where s p is going to be and what do you think our audience is voting for um oh i think the audience is voting for market down um and i think i think we were like 3800 ish myself so all right, so you're in the 3,700 to 3,999 range. Do you think our audience is there as well, or are they lower? Oh, oh no, I, I, think that's, I think that's where they are. All right, well, you are correct. 40% exactly choosing that tranche 
right now. We try to keep them nice wide to give you a lot of room to choose. Let's make it a little easier for you. And then we have followed by number two around here. So the 4,000 to 4,299 level. So north of 4,000, obviously, 22.5%. Then the Uncle Mike bunch, the optimistic bunch, north of 20, north of 4,300, I should say, 21.3%. So nearly a quarter of you not giving up the ghost just yet. And then to the dark side, below 3,700, 16.3%. Get in there at options if you haven't voted. The time is running out, listeners. Really quickly, you guys, I'd be curious to get your thoughts on this. Uh, We had a listener ask us about this on our options boot camp show yesterday, and it kind of became a big talking point, ended up being a big chunk of the show. Uh, There was an article the Journal just put out uh, talking about uh, the options market and expiration kind of in particular being a, a primary driver, a primary catalyst for the massive rally that we saw over the weekend or over the weekend, over the over the summer, <laughs> and of course the subsequent VIX decline that we saw. Uh, a, I'm curious, did either of you guys read this story? And then B, we asked our audience if they agreed, yes or no. And our audience, uh, almost two thirds, sixty percent saying no, forty percent for yes. No one choosing what is gamma, which is nice. That's obviously what they were talking about in the article: the impact of gamma around expiration. Listeners, uh, the the yeses have increased. It was almost you know ninety percent. No, yesterday. So that has increased. I'm curious for either of you. Either of you see this article, and B, do you uh, agree with our audience dismissing it or not? Are you, and you're asking me this one? I'm asking either of you. Who have either, have either of you seen this uh, article you know in the Wall Street Journal? I read the article. Um, and what are they claiming? Like, uh, what, a gamma squeeze caused the rally? They said effectively that expiration was a highly volatile thing, which it is, of course. That is true. But then they tried to put out these graphs and everything else saying that. The inflection point for the start of the rally back in June was June expiration, and the end of the rally was August expiration. It was expiration that started it and expiration that finished it. And then in the interim there, they tried to make some allusions to just increased overall options volume ended up right. sucking the market north. Well, I mean, I don't know, but, but I was a floor trader for a long time, and I never just had like a short-term option position. I had like one month, another month, another month, another month. So it's, I mean, I understand like there's explosive gamma and that comes off in these weeklies and stuff like that, but it's not the only position <laughs> that dealers have. Um, so I can understand there might be something to it. I just have a hard time believing it's big enough to drive uh, that much gamma is enough to drive, but I could be wrong. But, you know, a lot of times, Traders have back month, and and when they don't, that's when vol goes up. So vol coming in, right? That I have a hard time believing with vol coming in, there would that would generate a squeeze on the upside, right? Because dealers, part of trading is dealing is managing your inventory, as you well know, Mister uh, Longo. So if so, the dealers are allowing themselves to be squeezed into lower vol while they're letting their calls explode, like. To me, that doesn't make any sense, I have to say. But I am i have an open mind. I'm willing to learn. But if I'm trading it and I'm scrambling on the upside, I would not be compressing the ball in that in those option contracts. But that's just me. No, it's all front month all the time. That's the entirety of their position, sir. And they have, they have nothing else. <laughs> and that I'm, You have nothing else. I'm you trying to it. see if I could copy this image for you so you could, uh, I could send it so you could just see the charts. Uh, they were they were not subtle in their allusions to the fact that yeah, I can't do it right now. But you check it out for yourselves. Uh, it was interesting stuff. Again, I'm willing. I'm open minded as well. I'm willing. I'm I'm not really. I don't. I'm, I've been outspoken as saying I don't really agree, but I'm willing to be proven wrong if there is some uh, some magical evidence uh, to a foot. So far, <laughs> that is not the case. Yeah, it's it's you know these kind of articles that if they just wrote an article that said, hey, options expiration, gamma explodes, these are interesting and crazy periods. Maybe you should be a little bit more judicious in trading around them. That That's a great article. That's fine. That's useful. When they try to draw this parallel to then all of a sudden expiration is now the catalyst that is the beginning and end. It is the line of demarcation for this entire rally we had over the relatively thin period of the summer. I don't know. Then I, then I, start, to, uh, I start to question the conclusions that are being drawn there. But intriguing stuff, our audience will be the ultimate arbiter. So far, they're closer to 50-50 than I, than I thought. So interesting stuff as we keep on rolling. It is time to go around the block. Yeah! 
It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on for the rest of the week into the weekend. We will start with the unclest of Mike. Uncle Mike, if you have any thoughts on this article, uh, have at it. And then B, what are you keeping an eye on for the rest of the week into the weekend until we can gather here together on Monday outside of just loading up on all the Bitcoins? Of course. Uh, well, first off, I don't think we're having a show on Monday. We are celebrating Labor Day. Oh, you're correct. Mistaken. You're right. I was, I was planning to labor on Labor Day. Am I the only one? Okay, no laboring. On Labor Day. <laughs> no <then>. labor. <laughs> but we, we don't want to belabor the points. I got so caught up. I just love the show so much. Why would I take a day off? Even on my birthday, I work. So, uh, yes. Okay, Labor Day. I shall have the Labor Day off. That is fun. My producers neglected to remind me because <laughs> I was so caught up in the show. But Uncle Mike, I can always rely on you, sir. No show on Monday. So what are you keeping an eye on all the way into the misty future of next Thursday, sir? Aside from the sadness that I'll have that we don't get to do this show for another week, uh, just watching to see if we hold the 3,900. I think this is going to be a key close today. <coughs> Excuse me, to see if we can close above it. Uh, we have non-farm tomorrow, uh, seeing if the chip news from China as well as the quarantines from China become something much worse. And just seeing if that's already been factored in, because maybe 3,900 is the stopping point. Who knows? Seeing that, how things react, and uh, that is what I'm watching. Mr. Rock Lobster, what are you watching as you are also celebrating the fact you don't have to labor on Monday, sir? I don't have to labor on Monday. I, I'm, it's very exciting. Uh, uh, I'm going to actually try fishing this summer, <laughs> this weekend. Um, it's been a very busy summer. Um, oh, don't we have like some non-farm payrolls or something tomorrow? Oh, we got something like that. We got some something. Uh, looking at that. Uh, I, I believe we do have one. It's one calendar item, I believe. Um, and, you know, 3,900, okay, 3,800, I don't know, 4,000. I, I, I think, you know, we need a little bit of, I need, as, as the market needs a little light at the end of the tunnel. And again, I generally, I thought the global economies would do better coming out of the COVID thing. Then I realize, okay, there's been a lot of screw ups by leadership, basically, I think. Um, and that has dampened the recovery, even though a lot of people, there's still a lot of job openings, although some tech uh, is getting a squeeze a little bit. So, again, I'm not totally, uh, I'm not really bearish per se. I'm still looking for bargains, but, you know, what's, what, what is the catalyst that drives us up? And I just, to be honest, I don't see it for a while until some of these ab macro issues get better. So um, as far as this weekend goes, we'll see what number we get and, um, and, and see if that really moves the needle at all, which I, at this point, I don't think it will, right? So you have a non-farm payroll number. You know, if it's, if it's decent, the Fed's just going to keep on the path, right? Um, even I think a poor number is not going to stop them at this point. So um, the inflation is inflation is still moving the market and the Fed is still basically now once again in control. And we're just we're all like it's, it's the Fed's world and we just live in it. I'll just leave it with that. And that music means this episode of the Fed's world <laughs> closing right now. Don't worry if you need more in your ear holes, listeners. We'll be back in a little bit. So all you live folks hang out. We'll be back with Mr. Scott Nations holding down the CME group and FTSE Russell hot seats. Over there on the old Twifo. Should be fun. He's never been on Twifo before. So that'll be exciting. And before we go, let's go back around the horn. Let's go back the way we just went. Let's go back to the rockingest of lobsters. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir. If folks want to hit you up or the attractive Ted, where should they go? What should they do? Yes, 888-TRADE-01. And we are doing a meet and greet at Option Pit tonight. Go to our Option Pit website. If you, if you want to see me in a webinar and talk about how to trade a little VIX and a little SPY together, um, check it out. Seven o'clock. You'll learn something. It's free. Uh, you can kind of kick the tires on what we do at Option Pit. A lot of education and a lot of trade generation go on on a daily basis. We have a huge content stream uh, of uh, videos and um, entertainment and education and trade ideas on a daily basis for our students. Ooh, entertainment. So, uh, you going to be singing for the folks? Uh, 
well, you know, we, we try to entertain a little bit. You know, Mark <laughs> and I kind of put on the funny a little bit sometimes. Um, there's, there is, it does, it does entertain people from time to time. I got excited when you said meet and greet. I thought you were opening the doors to the Giovinazzi combo. I thought the golden ticket was finally at hand, and you could yes, go meet Willy one, Wonka. There will be the a combo. lobster bake one year, but uh, not this year. We're going to wait till things get a little... Not this year, know, says the Rock Lobster. Meanwhile, check it out for yourselves. Get that entertainment. Optionpit.com. <laughs> You're making me laugh, so that, you're already working right there. And let's go out to Uncle Mike. He's got content hitting left, right, and center as well. Mr. Uncle Mike, if folks want to consume it all, where should they go? What should they do? Follow me on Twitter, at Mike Tucson. I try and put out a lot of content. Uh, put out videos and tweets and whatnot, give me a follow. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, also, if you're looking for a financial advisor who is versed in this op- thing we called options, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Go to my website. You can make an appointment with me, stcharleswealth.com. we get some fun entertainment over there as well. Maybe some singing. Maybe some Gorilla Press slams. You name it. All right. Hit them up. At Mike Tussauds, is the place to go to begin your journey on the old Twitters or stcharleswealth.com is the place as well. We got to get on out of here for all of you on demand. Hit next. Twifo should hopefully be there waiting for you. If not, just wait a little bit. Be patient. All you live folks, you don't have to wait at all. Just coming at you a little bit later for the old Twifo. Back again tomorrow, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern for Volatility Views. And after that, for all you pro folks out there, going to get odd with options oddities. Then we're not back on Monday, not laboring on Labor Day, but back again on Thursday, another episode of the Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.